This video is sponsored by the Ultimate Freelancing Bundle by StudyWebDevelopment.com, which gives you everything you need to start your own freelancing business, including a 130-page in-depth guide, invoicing and client proposal templates, website templates, an SEO checklist, and much more. Visit the link in the description and use the code BRAD25 to get 25% off. Hey, what's going on guys? So in this video, we're gonna build a progressive web app using Vue.js and Ionic 4. So basically, we're gonna use a package called Ionic Vue that allows us to use Ionic 4 components within our Vue app so that we can have this cool mobile look. And as far as functionality, it's just a, basically we can look up information for a zip code. So if we type in 90210, and click find, it's gonna give us the city, the state, the abbreviation, the latitude, and the longitude. And we can clear that up. And the way that we're doing this is through a third party API called Zipapotum. Now, we're gonna build the, 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 the main functionality. We also have some error checking here with a nice little ionic uh, modal or alert here. But basically we're gonna build it out, deploy it to Firebase, and then we're gonna implement the progressive web app stuff. And what that's gonna do is create a service worker that will basically cache all of our assets and then cache any requests that we get back. So any data we get from any requests should get cached for offline viewing. So to give you an example, if I go to uh, application here, and you'll see we have a manifest, we have our service worker. I've messed with this quite a bit, but you can see our service worker right here is activated. And then down here is everything that's been cached, which is all the assets and then any requests that we get. So these are some zip codes that I've already done. So let's do 30304 and click find and you'll see that that gets added here to the list. So basically this stuff will all work offline because this data has been cached. So just to give you that, just to show you that if I go to network and I go offline, click offline, this will mimic not having an internet connection. So I'll just reload and you'll see the app still works because we cached all the assets. And if I do, let's say 90210 and click find, it works because remember that that response, that data has been cached. If I do 30303, that works as well. However, if I do, let's say 01910, that doesn't work. Notice how the screen just stayed the same. That was actually a Massachusetts zip code. Um, so it's not going to work for any rec any response that we haven't actually gotten back and cached. So that's basically how a, a simple progressive web app works. All right. And this, as far as this iPhone here, it's just the device toolbar in Chrome. So this is what it looks like without it. But I figured that uh, we'd use this while we're testing and stuff because it shows what it looks like on a mobile device. All right. So hopefully you enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get started. All right. So we're going to start from scratch. I just have my terminal open. So if you're going to follow along, go ahead and open your Mac terminal, Linux terminal, Windows command prompt, whatever it is you're using. And of course, you need Node.js installed because we're using NPM. So first thing you want to do is install the uh, view CLI globally. So you do npm install dash G and it's at view slash CLI. Okay. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to run that, but that's what you want to run to get that, to get the view command line utility. And then once you have that installed, you can just run view create, and then we can name our app. Let's just call it zip info dash PWA. And I'm going to choose the default. And it's just going to set up all the basic Vue.js files and folders. All right, so that's all set. Let's cd into zip info pwa, and then I'm going to open up VS Code with code dot. And you, if you're using a different text editor, that's fine. Just go ahead and open that up. Uh, you can see I have all the files on the side here. Now I'm going to use my integrated terminal from now on, so I'm going to open that up, close this one up. And there's a couple things we need to do. First off, we need to add the view router because I, the Ionic view router actually depends on the standard view router. So let's do view add router and make sure you're in the actual project folder. We're going to say yes to using history mode for the router. And once that's done, we're going to install the Ionic view package. So we're going to say npm install at Ionic slash view. 
and then there's a few things we need to do to basically just connect them together have you use that package so we can run the server so let's do npm run serve and that's going to start on port 8081 and you can see we just have a default Vue.js app nothing to do with ionic there's no ionic components or anything we need to set that stuff up so let's jump into source and then main js that's where we want to start and first thing i'm going to do is import ionic so let's say import ionic from and we're going to bring it in from ionic slash view we also want to bring in the styling so we want to bring in in quotes at ionic slash core slash css slash ionic dot bundle dot css that'll give us the styling and then right here we're going to call view dot use and we just want to pass in ionic and that should be all we need to do in this file so i'm going to go ahead and save that and we can close that up next thing we're going to do is go into the router because what we want to do is use the ionic view router as opposed to the standard router so we can actually get rid of this import and let's import in curly braces ionic view router and that's going to be from at ionic slash view and then down here where we have the view dot use it's going to be ionic view router and also right here where we initialize it ionic view router and then you can proceed to add your routes now we're just we're just going to have one route so i'm going to get rid of this whole about here we don't need that we're just going to have this index route so let's save that and by the way i have the prettier extension installed with semicolons enabled so it's going to add semicolons automatically now if we go back to our application you can see it doesn't look any different Uh, what we need to do now is go to our app dot view and we need to output whatever that ionic view router outputs. So basically like the, how, what they're doing here with the regular router, we need to do with the ionic router. So let's get rid of that style and we don't need that. We'll get rid of everything within this div right here and we're going to wrap everything in ion dash app. Okay, whenever you see this ion dash, this is a, an ionic component. And there's tons of them. If you want to look at the documentation, there's a whole bunch that mean all different types of stuff. This is basically we're wrapping our entire app in this. But there's buttons, there's there's inputs, uh, all types of different components, and we'll be using a bunch of them. Now, in order to output our application, we need to do ion dash view dash router dash not dot. Okay, so if I save that. let it recompile real quick and then take a look we still have the same content all right that styling is gone i got rid of it we still have the content here and now we have the ability to actually use ionic components so i'm going to go back into let's see i'm going to open up the views folder and then home.view Uh, we can actually delete the about.view we don't need that we can also delete in components there's a hello world.view that's being displayed i'm going to delete that and then in back in home.view let's get rid of the import of hello world let's get rid of where we uh, assigned hello world to the components and let's get rid of this stuff up here and we can start to use ionic components now in this div right here i'm going to give a class of ion dash page so basically every page you create you want to wrap in a div with that class and then we can proceed to use ionic components like the header which is the you know that part at the top so we'll do header and then we can do ion dash toolbar oops toolbar and inside the toolbar we can have ion dash title and i'm going to give it a title of zip info and then under the header we'll have ion dash content which is just where we put our main content and i want some padding or else it'll be right up to the edge so we're going to give it a class of ion dash padding and for now i'm just going to say my app okay so let's save that and that should build okay and if we take a look now you can see we have our header our ion header with the title and then we have the content that just has my app in it. 
So now we need to get our components in here. Now, just for testing, I like to when I'm dealing with uh, progressive web apps, anything to do with mobile, I like to use the, the Chrome tools device toolbar. So if you click this icon right here, it'll show you in a device. You can choose the device. I like to use the Chrome around it. So I have the um, show device frame as well. So if you want to go ahead and do that, you can. But this is how we'll be testing the application. So let's jump into back into VS Code and figure out what we need to do. Now, we, we're, we're going to have three main components, right? So we'll have in a zip search, which will be the search form. We'll have the zip info, which will be the info that displays and then a clear info component, which will be a button to clear out uh, whatever zip is, is basically in the state. Okay, so let's start off with the zip search component. So in components, I'm going to create a new file called zip search dot view. And by the way, the the service worker stuff, the progressive web app stuff, that's going to be at the end after we build the the actual functional component. So let's see zip search. We're going to oh, I should have probably mentioned this earlier. I would highly recommend using the Vitor extension here if you're using VS Code. If you've used Vue.js with VS Code, you've probably used this, but it's fantastic for syntax highlighting, snippets. It, it allows us to use Emmet within the templates, uh, all kinds of stuff. So with that extension, I can actually just say scaffold and it will give me a template, a script and style. Now we're not going to need any style. We're getting all of our style from Ionic, so we can completely get rid of that. And then in the template up here, we're going to use an ion dash grid component. And if you want to style things differently later on, if you want to look at the components and stuff, you can do that. But I'm just creating a just a basic clean style. And then I'm going to have a form right here. We don't need an action. And inside the form, we're going to have an ion dash call, which is a column. And inside there we'll have ion dash item, which is kind of like a grid item. It's like a grid system. And in the item, I want the label and the input for the text field okay, for the zip code. So let's do ion dash label and we'll say zip code. And underneath the label, let's do an ion dash input. And this is going to have quite a few properties, but for now, I'm just going to add a name of zip. And then inside here, uh, we don't want to actually don't want to put anything inside there. So underneath the ion item, I'm sorry, underneath the ion call, let's create another ion call. Sometimes Emmet is a little finicky with this. But inside this ion call, I'm going to put the submit button. So it's going to be ion dash button. And we want to make sure we add the type of submit. And then I'm going to add a color of primary. And let's just say find. So that's our submit. Actually, one more property. Let's add expand and set that to block so that it goes all the way across. All right, so let's save that. Uh, actually, down here we have to do we have to go ahead and give this a name, this component a name. Let's say zip search. And now we should be able to bring it into our home dot view. So right here I'm going to import zip search from we're going to go up one level into components into zip search and then let's add that. Let's register that as a component here. Okay, and we'll save and it should show it. Let's see what do we got here? Um, what did I do wrong? We got name, home, components. Has been registered. Oh, I didn't embed it <laughs> up here where we have my app. We need to embed zip search. All right. So that should work. Let's go ahead and check it out. And there we go. So we have our form, our input here so we can type stuff in here 90210. But obviously nothing's going to happen. It's just a form that does nothing. So let's figure out what we want to happen here. 
Now, when we submit, I want to do some checking. I want to make sure that it's it's formatted as a zip code. We're going to do that in this component. And then what what I want to happen is for it to emit the zip code up basically into the home component. And then I want to pass that into um, a, a method where we can make a request to the Zipopotam API and get back the data. And then what I want to do is take that data and put it into another component called zip info, which will be displayed below it. All right, so let's work on the validation. Uh, we're going to be utilizing a modal or an alert. I don't know what it's called. Part of Ionic where we get a little pop up. Nice looking little pop up that will tell us that it's not a, a zip code. So in zip search, let's uh, let's see. I don't want to start this out. Let's create a piece of data. So right here we're going to say data, which is a function and we want to return from this an object with a value called zip that's going to be empty by default. All right. Now this value here, the zip, we want to basically bind to this input. Now usually with view we would do v dash model and then zip, but When we use Ionic, we can't we actually can't do that. And there's a couple uh, resources in the docs that, that explain this a little bit more. But what we have to do is do colon value and set that to zip. And then we also have to set at input. And we're going to say input uh, equals and then inside quotes here, we're going to say zip equals. And then money sign event dot target dot value. So whatever is typed in. So basically whatever is typed in is going to be is going to be equal to this zip value. And then I'm just going to put a placeholder as well. So we'll say uh, placeholder if I can spell it right. So placeholder and we'll say enter US uh, zip code. Okay. so Now we have this we have this bind we bought we bound this zip to this input and now we need a submit. So in the form tag here, let's do at submit and let's set this to a method called on submit. Actually, I want to do lowercase. Oh, so it's going to call a method called on submit. So we'll create that down here. So underneath the data, let's put in methods. Methods is an object and we're going to add an on submit method. All right, and this is going to take in an event parameter and then we want to just pre prevent the default behavior. So e dot prevent default. And now we should be able to get that zip by let's just console log by doing this dot zip. So whatever we type in, I'm going to save that. Whatever we type in should then display in the console. Okay, so if I put in you know, whatever and I click find, it displays in the console. Now, I want to do our validation here. So I'm going to use a regular expression. I'm actually going to paste this in because I don't want to type all this out. But basically, we just have a variable called is valid zip. And then we have a regular expression between these slashes that is a zip code. It's the five digits and then the four digits or whatever, or just the five. It's just a zip code regular expression. And then we're calling the test method on it and passing in this dot zip to test. So this will be either true or false. It'll be either a valid uh, true you know, uh, match or false. It won't match. So let's do a test for a valid zip. And we can do that by saying if let's actually say if not is valid zip. Then what do we want to do if it's not? So if it's not, we want to show an alert. Now we could put the code in here, the ionic stuff, but I'm just going to create another method called show alert. And uh, and then right here. Well, we'll do that after. Let's just let's do the show alert. So we want to go under the on submit, which ends right here and say show alert. Now with Ionic, we can do return and we can say this dot money sign Ionic dot alert controller. OK, 
Okay, now this alert controller has a method called create. We're going to call that. We're going to pass in an object with a couple values. So header. For header, I'm going to say enter zip code. And let's do message. So for message, I'm going to say please enter a valid US zip code. And then finally we want buttons. And we're just going to have one OK button. And then this actually returns a promise. So we have to do a dot then here and then we'll have a parameter called a and then we just need to call the present method. So a dot present. Like that and that should set off the alert. So let's try it out. So we'll head over back here and let's just put like 11. And there we go. Enter zip code. Please enter a valid US zip code. And we have an OK button. So if I put in uh, 90210, that works. We don't get the error. If I put one extra, it doesn't work. Okay, so it has to be formatted as a zip code. Good. So we have our validation. Now, what we want to happen if this passes, which is this else right here, is we want to emit. the zip code that's typed in we want to emit that upwards so that we can basically catch it in home dot view and pat and and run a method on it where we can make a request to the API. Okay, and there's a few ways you could do it. You could make the request in here, but I want to kind of keep our home dot view as kind of like our centralized uh, you know, place where we make our requests and stuff. So let's say this dot money sign emit. And we're going to emit an identifier. Let's call this get zip. We could call this anything. And then the data I want to pass up is just the zip. Okay, whatever is typed in. And then once that's done, I just want to clear the zip from the form. So I'm going to just set that to nothing after actually after the show alert. Let's do the same thing. Clear that up. So we'll just set that to nothing. All right, so that's it. Now we need to catch this get zip in home dot view where we have our zip search right here. So for zip search, we're going to put the V dash on directive and we're going to say on get zip. Then we want to run a method or yeah, a method called get zip info. So let's create that down here. So we'll put in methods. which is an object and we're going to have get zip info and that's actually going to provide us with the zip code that that was passed in because we passed it in right here. Okay, so it's going to be available to us. So let's do a quick console log and see if this actually works. If it gets sent up and then this method gets called. So we'll just try this out. If we put in something that is not a zip code, we'll get an error. Let's do 90210. And there we go. It's console logging. So that means that this method is actually getting called. Now, this method is where we want to make our request, right? So I'm going to use the fetch API. I'm also going to use a sync await. So I'm going to label this a sync and let's get rid of this console log and let's do const res. Okay, so our response and we're going to set this to await. fetch because the fetch API returns a promise and then we want to put our URL in here. Now the URL I actually have a sample open right here is going to be this API dot zip upon them dot US slash US and then the actual zip code. And this is the data that it's going to give us back. So let's go ahead and copy this. Well, you guys can type it out uh, and we'll paste that in. So API zip upon them US slash US and then just replace this with the zip that's passed into the method. All right. Now with the fetch API, um, this doesn't give us back the data right away. We actually want to format it as JSON. But before I do that, I'm going to make sure that this isn't a 404 because there are there are, uh, you know, five numbers that aren't zip codes. So we want to make sure that it's an actual zip code. So I'm going to say if res dot status is equal to 404, then let's um, let's do another show alert. So we'll say this dot show alert. 
and I'm just going to copy from zip search the show alert we have there and put that under the get zip info right here. I'm just going to change the header to not valid. Okay. Now, we're going to keep going here if it's if it's not a 404, then let's say uh we'll just we'll just set a temporary variable here to res.json. Whoops, res.json which should give us the data and then we'll console log info just to make sure that we got it. So let's try this out. Now, if I do five ones, that's not a valid zip code. And you can see I get not valid. So let's do something that is valid. And submit. Oh, we get a promise over here because I forgot to do a wait. This res.json returns a promise, so we have to do a wait there. I've been using Axios too long. <laughs> so let's try it again. And now we get the data. So take note of the format of the data. We get an object with a country, country abbreviation, postcode, and then a places array because there could be more than one. However, we're only dealing with the first one. So we're going to get the zero index, which has the place name, which is the city, the state, the state abbreviation, the latitude and longitude. And I, I hate when APIs do put a space like this in the keys. but it's just something we're going to have to deal with. We just have to use brackets instead of dot syntax in the template. All right, so we know that we can get this data. Now, what do we want to do with it? We're going to want to pass it into another component. So I'm actually going to add some data to this home home.view file here. So let's say data and let's return an object and we're going to have this info value which by default is going to be null. And then what happens is once we make the request, we're going to set that value, this dot info to that data that comes back. We can get rid of the console log. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now I think yeah, I think that's all we have to do here because now the the data will be put into that info. So now we want a component called zip info that we can pass this into. So I, I haven't created it yet, but I'm going to import it. I'll create it in a second. Let's import zip info from dot dot slash component slash zip info. And we're just going to register it here. And let's embed it up here right under zip search. So zip info and then we want to bind we're going to v bind info to the info that's in the data. All right. So as soon as that response gets back, it's going to get assigned to that info and it's going to get passed into zip info. So let's save that and it's going to give us an error because there is no zip info. So let's create it. So components will say zip info dot view. So let's just uh, we'll scaffold out here and we don't need styling. Get rid of that and let's give this a name of zip info and then let's create the template. So we're going to I'm going to use an iron card here, which is like any other card, like a bootstrap card. It just has a border and padding. Now, I don't want that any anything at all to show if there's nothing in info. If we haven't made a request, if we haven't submit the form, then I, I don't want anything to show. So I'm going to do a V if directive here and we'll say if info, basically if the info prop. And one thing I forgot to do is down here, if we're going to pass in a prop of info, we need, actually need to define that. So let's say props and then pass in info. Okay, so we'll say if info, then uh, let's see, we have a card and then we're going to have a card header. So I in card header. When you're using Ionic components, you tend to, there tends to be a, a lot of markup. So in here we can have a subtitle and a title. So let's do I in dash card dash subtitle. 
and I'm going to put the postcode here. So if we look at the response, let's just look at this here. We have post space code. Now, since it's a space in the key, we have to do it like this. Normally we could do like uh, what is it? Info dot. And if it was all if it was all one word like that, we could do it like that. But it's not. So we're going to do info brackets and then in here post space code. Okay, and then under that we'll do an iron dash title or I, yeah, iron card title it fixed it for me. No, not subtitle. Title like that. And in here I want to put the place name or the city. Now that is actually in the array of places. Okay, it's going to be the first value in places and it has a key of place name. So keep that in mind. So we're going to do info. And then oops, we have to do brackets and it's going to be in the places array. It's going to be the zero index and it's going to have a key of place name. All right. Now I'm going to save this and I want to see if this actually works. So we have we already embedded it here. We're passing in info, which by default is null. So if we look at our app, We shouldn't see anything right now. Uh, let me see what's what are these errors? Okay, so those went away. So if we do 90210 and fine, there we go. We get our our uh, zip info component, which has the, the zip code and the city. Now we want to add some other stuff here so we can continue to build on to it. But we know that it's working. So back in zip info, let's go under the header. still within the card and let's do i and dash card dash content. And in here I'm going to do an i and list, which is like an unordered list, and we can do an i and dash item. And in the item, let's do a label. And I'm going to do a strong tag here and say state colon and then underneath that I want the state so I'm going to put in whoops put in my double curly braces and from info we want to get from the places array zero index and then we want the state okay and then I'm going to put next to it a set of parentheses with the state abbreviation So we can do that. Let's just copy this whole thing we just did and put it in the parentheses and just change this to state uh, abbreviation. Okay, and then underneath that we'll do the latitude and longitude and we're going to put those in items as well. So I'm just going to copy this item. And let's do one and two and this one will be. Uh, latitude get rid of this and latitude is also in the places array so we just want to say latitude and then let's do the same with longitude and get rid of this and longitude okay so that should do it let's save it Let's take a look. So if we do 90210 find there we go. So we have our card. We have our city, our heading header, our list with all the data that we need. Good. If we do, uh, let's say 30302, we get Atlanta. If we do something that doesn't exist, we get an error. We're going to get this over here as well, but you can see in the UI we get that pop up. Now I want to wait to, uh, to clear this from the, from the state from that uh, info value. So we're going to have another component. Let's call this. We'll call it clear. Info dot view. So clear info dot view. This is going to be pretty simple. We're going to let's scaffold. And let's see, we don't need styling. And in our script here, let's add the name. 
which is clear info. And we're actually going to pass in a prop of info into this as well. And then in our template here, let's have a button an I and dash button and we'll just say clear and there's a few attributes we need to add on to this button. So let's do uh, type. So type. Actually, no, we don't need a type. Let's do color and we're going to make it light. Let's do expand and set that to block so it goes all the way across. And then I only want this to show if there's info. If info is null, no need to show this. So let's do a V if and set that to info. Okay, that's why we're passing in info. And then we'll have a click. And all we want the click to do is emit an event. So we're going to do money sign emit and let's call this clear dash info. And that's it. So now let's go back to our home dot view and we're going to bring in that component. So let's we'll just copy this down. We'll bring in clear info. OK, and let's register this here. And what else we're going to uh, embed it up here. So let's do clear info. Now what we want to pass in here is for one V bind info because remember it takes in that as a prop. So we're going to say V bind colon info equals info. And then remember we're emitting that clear info event. So we want to say V on clear info. And when that happens we're going to call a method called clear info. All right, so let's create that method down here, which is going to be very, very simple. I'm going to put it between the get zip info and show alert. So clear info. Make sure you put a comma. And all we're doing here is setting this dot info back to null. That's it. Everything else will be reactive to that. So let's save and let's go back. Okay, clear that up. Let's put in 90210. Find. And now you can see the clear button is displayed because something is in info. If I click clear, it clears it back up. All right, so our main functionality is complete. It's a very simple application. It's it's a handy application if you need to know what uh, you know what city a zip code belongs to. You could build on to it and add the reverse as well if you want to put a city in and get the zip code or zip codes. Uh, you could do that as well. But now we're going to make this progressive. And in order to do that, in order to add a service worker and all that and and actually test it, we need to deploy it. And we're going to use Firebase for that. So I'm going to go to Firebase. And you can use Firebase for free. There's a free tier. I think it's the Spark tier. Uh, but I'm going to go to my console here. So obviously you need an account, uh, which I don't think you need to sign up for a specific Firebase account. I think you just need a Google account. So I'm going to add a project and let's call this. We'll call this. Uh, zip finder. I guess it's going to be zip finder and then this, which is fine. And then we'll just accept here. I think you can create it from the, the Firebase tool CLI, but I'm just going to do it here. And we're not actually using like the database or authentication or anything like that from Firebase. We're, we're purely using it for hosting here because it's an easy option. So let's say continue and it gives us HTTPS, which we need for a progressive web app. So we have our project created. Now we need to install the the uh, tools, the Firebase tools. So let's go back to our terminal here. I'm going to just uh, get out of my server for a second and let's do NPM install Firebase. Actually, do sudo here since I'm on a Mac. So sudo NPM install Firebase dash tools and we want to do dash G for global. I actually don't remember if I have this on this particular machine. 
All right, so Firebase tools are now installed. So I'm going to do Firebase login. And looks like I'm already logged in. So let's do a Firebase. If you're not, then just go ahead and uh, I think it opens Chrome and you just select your account. So let's do Firebase list. And this should list out the credentials were incorrect. All right. So if you get this, then just do Firebase log out. And then log back in Firebase login. And I'm not going to allow collection of data. Okay, so now I choose an account. I'm going to choose this tech guy info and click allow. Okay, so login is successful. So we're now logged in through Firebase tools, as you can see. And now we should be able to do Firebase list and it should show our projects. Okay, so it, it doesn't show my new project. Was I not logged in as the correct? I wasn't. I wasn't logged in as the correct person. All right, so I'm going to log back out. Sorry about this, guys. I'm going to log back out and then log back in with a different account. The one that I actually used. Okay. So now Firebase list. And now I have that uh, zip finder. Okay, so that's what I want to use. Now, next thing we want to do is run Firebase init. And it's going to ask us the features we want to use from Firebase data like database, Firestore, cloud functions. What we want is just hosting. So I'm going to click the space bar for hosting and that's it. And then select a default Fire, Firebase project for this directory. Um, so we're going to go to uh, I'm going to go to my zip finder. Now it's going to ask what we want to use as your public directory. And this is very important. We haven't built out our static assets for view yet. When we do, it's going to be in a dist folder. So it's important if you're using default Vue.js that you add dist right here for your public directory. Okay, it's going to ask to configure as a single page app, which yes, we want. And now we're all set. Okay, so now all we should have to do is build out our application. So npm run build. And what that'll do is it'll build for production. It's going to create a dist folder. And we haven't done we haven't done the service worker stuff yet. We're going to get to that after. I just want to get this deployed. Once it's deployed, it's very simple to um, to make changes and, you know, push to it again. So next thing we need to do is simply run Firebase. We could run Firebase serve and actually serve it from Firebase, but I'm going to go ahead and deploy. And it's going to give us a temporary, not a temporary, but a, like a dummy URL, a very ugly URL, a Firebase app dot com one. And of course, you can go ahead and add your own domain if you wanted to. But obviously, we're not going to do that. So our URL is this right here. I'm going to go ahead and open that up and see if it works good. And you know what I'll do is use the iPhone wrapper here and you can actually go to this domain or whatever your domain is in, with your smartphone or with any device. So let's try it out. We'll do 90210 and looks like it works. It reaches out to the API. We'll try clicking that. Good. All right. So our application works. So now we want to start on the PWA part of this. Now there's a package that we can use called view slash PWA. Because when you build a progressive web app, you need to have what's called a manifest file. Um, you need to have a service worker and you need basically what this package is going to do is it's going to give us a file to register a service worker. And then we have to add a, some add some config values to it as well. We need to add some code so that it caches um, all the requests that are made to our API. Okay, so let's jump back into VS Code and let's close all these up. This is very confusing. And down here, I'm going to say view. Let's do view add and then we can do at view slash PWA. 
and this is a this is a view plugin. And again, what it should do is whoops, what happened here? Permission issue. Okay, let's do sudo. It should create inside public. Okay, so we have a manifest.json file. Let's see. So in public we have a manifest.json and you can see it has a, a name zip info pwa for the short name I'm going to change it to zip info like that. And then it has some icons for Android um the start URL we're actually going to make this just slash because it could give us some issues if we don't do that uh just the way with with how Firebase works. Also, what else? Um the theme I'm going to do the background color white and the theme color I'm going to use that blue that we're using in the app so or that ionic blue which is 3880 ff and I think this file should be good. Now some other things that happened when we ran when we installed the PWA is inside image you'll notice we have all these different icons. So all these different size icons for different, you know, Apple Touch, uh Android and all that. Now what I've done is I've actually created uh a bunch of my own that I'm going to throw in here and you can get these from the repository in the description, but let me just look for those real quick. So let's see. This might take me a second. Okay, so I'm going to go to our application which is right here and let's see inside images wait this isn't right that's the dist folder inside uh source not source public img icons we have all these icons that are basically view js so what i'm going to do is grab second All right, so I have these icons which are just the little the little house with the zip. So I'm going to just grab these and bring these over. I'm going to replace um what we have here. It's not a big deal. You don't have to, but if you want to, they're in the repository. Just replace all. And uh yeah, I guess I'll just move those. Okay, so another thing is the favicon here. I have a custom favicon I'm just going to bring over here. Okay, and again, that those should be in the files in the description. All right, so now that we've handled that, I want to look at a specific file which is uh register service worker. So this is actually going to create our service worker. when we build out our application it's going to be called service worker js um now there's a couple ways we can do this we can use there's two plug two different plugin modes there's one that's called i think it's inject manifest and one called generate sw and generate sw is like it pretty much does everything automatic for us so that's what we're going to use Uh it doesn't allow you as much customization but we're not getting really deep into this. I just want a basic PWA so that's what we're going to use. And the way we use it is we need to create a, a config file in the root. So make sure you're in the root directory and we're going to create view.config.js. All right? And then inside here we're going to do module.exports set that to an object and we want to put PWA and set that to an object. So everything we put in here has to do with the progressive web app options. And this this plugin we're using uses something called Workbox. If you've ever heard of that, it's a basically a library for service workers. Um and we're going to set a couple values here. So let's say Workbox, it's B, excuse me, BOX and we're going to set the plugin mode and we're going to set it to generate 
SW instead of inject manifest. And then we're going to set workbox options. And we want to set our navigate uh, fallback. And that's going to be our index, our main index HTML file. Actually, we want to do slash index HTML, navigate fallback. And then we need to it, this will actually cache all of our assets automatically, like the images folder and stuff like that. But we need to specify um, runtime caching here. So we want to do runtime caching to be able to cache our responses we get from the Zipapotum API. So the way we do this is we put an object here and we need to specify a couple things. So we need a URL pattern. And we're going to use a regular expression here. So new uh, regular expression. And we're going to say anything inside here, inside these quotes, we're going to say anything that starts with, which we use the caret, which is the you know shift six, number six. And we want the API root URL, which is HTTPS and then API dot uh, Z I P P O P O T A M dot US slash US slash. So it's going to look for that. Okay, and then we want to add a handler and we want to specify network first. Okay, this is where caching Um, the data that's coming from a network request and then for options we can set things like the timeout so let's say network timeout seconds and we'll say 20 and we'll say cache name okay so what do we want to call this we'll call it api dash cache and let's say cacheable Uh, cacheable response and we can set statuses and we'll set from 0 to 200 okay we don't want to cache like uh, errors and stuff like that all right so I think that should be it let's save this file hopefully I didn't mess anything up and it should generate a service worker js file automatically and it should include this stuff here Okay, unless I'm missing something, which I don't think I am. So let's give it a shot. Let's um, you don't have to delete the dist folder, but I'm going to just delete it. And then I'm going to run NPM run build. And hopefully it creates our service worker file. And then what we can do is push to Firebase. All right, so let's see, looks like failed to compile with one errors. The dependency was not found register service worker to run it. NPM install register service worker. Uh, let's see. You know what? Let's try running NPM. I or NPM install. What's this permission denied? Okay, so now I'm going to try to run npm run build again. Let's see if that works. Yeah, now that's gone. All right, so hopefully this one works. Okay, good. So it created a disk folder. Let's take a look at it. And inside our disk folder, notice we have our service worker JS. And this was created for us. It's using something called pre-cache. And if we look right here, see how it's registering the route for the, our API? and has like our network timeout seconds and stuff. This was generated because of what we have in the view, uh, the view config, this stuff here. Okay, and then we have our pre-cache manifest here to cache all of our assets. So this should be good. So let's let's push it to Firebase now. So we have our dist folder. So let's do Firebase deploy.
and now hopefully we have a progressive web app. Okay, so let's go back to our browser and reload. I'm just going to do a hard reload here. You can see the favicon changed and over here on the console, check it out. Service worker has been registered. New content is downloading. Content has been cached for offline use. And the reason we're seeing that is inside of our register service worker, which is uh, in our source. You can see right here at these certain points when it's registered at console logs, when it's updated console logs. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into application. And there's our service worker, so it's it's running. And if we look in our cache storage, we have our zip info PWA. So this should be yep, all of our assets. And if I make a request here, say 30302 and check it out right here, API cache. Remember, that's what we called it. And if we look at it, it gives us the path. It gives us the response. So the response from the API is now being cached so that if For some reason, the Internet goes out. We can still make this request. Now, it's only going to if the Internet goes out, it's only going to let us make, you know, get data from requests we've already made that have been cached. Uh, but if you were getting, let's say you had an endpoint where you were just fetching like users or blog posts or something like that, that would all get cached. Our application is a little different because we have to keep looking up different zip codes and it's caching each response. But you can see how this works. So if I do 90210 and find, you'll see that that gets added. Let's do 30303, 30304. All right, uh, let's do 01210. which is actually not valid. And you can see that didn't get cached because we're not caching uh, anything above 200. Let's do oh, uh, 01860 Merrimack, Massachusetts. All right, so you can see all the responses that were cached. Now what I'm going to do is mimic uh, just having no internet. So we can do that in Chrome by going to network. And I need to make this a little bigger so I can see the offline right here. I'm going to check that. And then once I reload, we're offline. Okay, no Internet connection and the, the application still works. Now, if I make a uh, request and I search for 30302, there we go. It works and it's coming from our service worker. Actually, if you look down here in the network tab right here, see how it says from service. from service worker that's that's the stuff that's being cached if i do 018 what i do 60 that works as well now if i do 30306 that we're not going to get that okay because it's not cached it's just going to stay on the last screen now you could implement something that says you know in offline mode or something like that figure out some kind of way to let the user know But I think just having it like this, I mean, I think that's fine for this for this course or for this tutorial. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I'll go ahead and put the repository in the description. And if you want to add to it, make it more advanced, feel free to, to do whatever you'd like with it. Uh, but that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, one of the best, if not the best resource I can refer you to for starting a freelance business is at studywebdevelopment.com slash freelancing. The creator Kyle shared it with me and I can personally vouch that this bundle is well worth it. You get a 130 page guide to freelancing and it comes with things like invoice templates, client proposals, HTML and CSS templates, a portfolio website, access to a private Facebook community and much more. So use the code BRAD25 to get 25% off today.